Hello, my name is Lydia Stetson, and I am a member of the University of Wyoming's Beta Alpha Psi Delta Alpha Chapter. Today I'm going to be referencing Kiso's Intermediate Accounting book of the 13th edition, and we're going to look at an accounting problem that involves the conventional retail and dollar value LIFO retail inventory methods. The particular problem we're looking at is E926 from set B, which is the online version of Kiso's book. First off, let's see what the problem is asking. Miller Corporation began operations on January 1, 2010 with a beginning inventory of $10,600 at cost and $14,000 at retail. The following information relates to 2010. This little table gives us the amounts at retail of the net purchases, the net markups, the net markdowns, and the sales. The instructions say to assume Miller decided to adopt the conventional retail method and to compute the ending inventory to be reported in the balance sheet. If you look in your books on page 454 and 455, there are good examples of conventional retail inventory methods with markups and markdowns. Now for this problem, the first thing we're going to do is list our beginning inventory, which is the 10600 at cost and the 14000 at retail. Then we're going to list our purchases, and we're going to go back and see that our net markups are 20000 and then we want to have a total. And then we're going to subtract our net markdowns and our sales. And then retotal it, which gives us our ending inventory at retail to be reported on the balance sheet. Now for part B of E926, it says to assume instead that Miller decided to adopt the dollar value life of retail method. The appropriate price indexes are 100 at January 1st and 110 at December 31st. Compute the ending inventory to be reported in the balance sheet. The dollar value LIFO retail method eliminates price changes so as to measure the real increase in inventory and not the dollar increase. This is where the price index given to us in the problems come in. If an increase in quantity occurs, then the company prices the increase at the new index in order to compute the value of the new layer. If a decrease in quantity occurs, the company subtracts the increase from the most recent layers to the extent necessary. So when a real increase in inventory occurs, a new layer is added. In this case, the quantity increased, so a new layer is going to be added. Similar to part A, first we're going to put in our beginning inventory, plus our net purchases, plus the net markups, minus the net markdowns, which will give us a total one, without the beginning inventory, and two, with the beginning inventory. Then you're going to subtract your sales to get more totals, which is you're going to be your ending inventory at retail, or your current for the 31,000, and your ending inventory at retail at the base year for 28,182. Next, you're going to compute your cost to retail ratio for a new layer. The cost to retail ratio is the cost of goods available for sale divided by the sum of the original retail price of the goods plus the net markups and minus the net markdowns. In this case, that's the 137,400 divided by the 202,000, which gives you 68%. Now, if we look at our layers, the first one we're going to look at is the base layer. You're going to take the 14,000, which is your beginning inventory at retail, times 1, which is the price index given to us in the problem, times 75.71%. Now this percentage comes from dividing the beginning inventory at cost divided by the beginning inventory at retail. Now the second layer is going to be the 28,182 minus that first 14,000 that we used in that base layer times the 1.1, which is what we got from the price index given to us in the problem, times the 68%, which is the cost to retail ratio we figured above for the new layer. This gives us the ending inventory at LIFO cost of $21,121. For the last part of the problem, Part C, it asks us that on the basis of the information in Part B, we have to compute the cost of goods sold. Now to compute the cost of goods sold, you just have to subtract in the inventory at cost from the cost of goods available for sale. So if we look at part B, 
our ending inventory at cost is 21,121. So in finding our solution, we have the cost of goods available for sale, which minus the ending inventory at cost of the 21,121, which gives us our cost of goods sold. Thank you. My name is Olivia Sessa.